Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be starting our coverage of the 2014 Chess Olympiad. This is actually played every two years. My favorite tournament because it's a little bit different than most chess tournaments, which are all individual performances. The Chess Olympiad is actually by countries. So there's about 170 countries represented. Each country has five players in each round. We have two weeks of chess here, which is pretty cool. But in each round, the country can pick four of their players to go up against four players from another country. It's a Swiss style format so each round you're playing someone that has equal as far as their results in the previous round so even though you're not going to play all 169 other countries you'll be playing other countries that are doing about as well as you so really really cool formats I'm going to try to hop around and do as much coverage as I can there's going to be hundreds if not thousands of matches uh, throughout these this two week span so I'll try to do as many as possible but our first match today that we're going to be going over is White's going to be played by Oscar De La Riva, and he's actually from Andorra, if you're not too familiar with that, northeast part of Spain. Uh, and then on the black side, is going to be played by Anish Giri. He's 20 years old. He's Dutch. He's, he's in my opinion, one of the, the up-and-coming players uh, that could potentially challenge Magnus Carlsen in a few years. So I thought it'd be cool. Uh, the Netherlands is kind of my my dark horse to go ahead and win this tournament. They're probably in the top 10, uh, maybe 10 or 11 as far as overall team country that can compete but uh, I think they have a chance that they've got some some youngsters some youth on their team that I think they can actually win this tournament so that's what we're going to be going over today hopefully you guys enjoy it Oscar de la Riva playing the white pieces starts out with pawn to e4 pawn to c5 from Anish the Sicilian defense knight f3 knight c6 bishop to b5 and then we see pawn to g6 Fianchetto on the king side castle and then bishop here to g7 now it's always fun especially in the the earlier rounds you have different players playing each other sometimes very very different in skill level in this particular match anish is about 200 points higher than his opponent but in some of these matches you have a 1100 point disparity in points because there's so many countries some of these countries don't have a lot of extremely talented players um, so it, it's always fun to watch but in this particular case we have two grandmasters that are very very solid at chess so we should expect a, a pretty good match here a rook to e1 getting behind this pawn here on e4 uh, knight to f6 black's just developing his pieces like normal the next move from white is pretty interesting and it's pawn here to c3. Now, usually you don't see pawn to c3 after pawn to e4 in the Sicilian defense, unless it's kind of that Ponziani opening, meaning it's, it's very early on. You usually see it as one of the first few moves. You typically don't see it as the sixth move in the game, because in this particular case, uh, you know, Anish already has a lot of his pieces developed on board, and, and so it's going to be hard for White to gain the advantage that he may in the normal Ponziani opening. Now from here we see Black Castle on the king side getting some safety. And then we see Pawn here to h3, which is, again, also an interesting move. White's not being as aggressive as he maybe should be. The Sicilian defense for Black is a pretty aggressive defense, uh, but White needs to really take advantage of the fact that he's gone first. After you play Pawn to c3, you're usually looking forward to push forward with Pawn here to d4, really trying to control the center of the board. h3, you know, doesn't have to worry about too much. Maybe Knight here to g4, but not really threatening this Pawn. Pawn here on d7 hasn't moved, so he doesn't have to worry about this light square bishop coming down here and pinning down the knight right away. So I would have liked to see pawn here to d4. This pawn here on c3 is blocking, you know, Oscar de la Riva's development of his knight here to c3. Uh, his dark square bishop is going to be a little bit awkward to get involved into the game. So h3 seems a little bit passive to me, almost conceding uh, the early moves into his opponent because he knows he's playing such a talented player. Queen here to b6, and this is a pretty solid move, threatening this bishop, but it also puts more pressure on the square here on d4. Knowing that his opponent would like to play pawn here to d4, this kind of stops that as it's adding more and more pressure to this square. Black now has his pawn here, his knight here on c6. He has a discovered defense after his knight moves with his bishop here on g7. So a lot of different pieces honing down on the square on d4 where, you know, Anish knows that white really wants to go. So the bishop's forced to come back here. Then the rook swings over here to d8. So black can actually push forward in the center of the board. The bishop comes back here to b3. Still trying to control this long diagonal right here. 
Then pawn here to uh, d5, trying to control the center of the board. I really like in this particular ca case, if we analyze it, the bishop here on b3, since it's controlling the center, is just taking with his pawn here on d5, breaking up the center of the board. But instead, Oscar decides to play an interesting move, and it's pawn here to e5. The reason I don't like it is because knight to e4 is a it's a pain to deal with. I, I personally would not want to have to go against this right here. It's very aggressive. Again, black is already kind of taking control of the aggression in this game, uh, and, and so white really has to find a way to get that advantage back because right now black is kind of controlling things. So pawn here to d3 and then pawn to c4. And, and pawn to c4 is kind of that next level play that I think about when it's kind of a you're really, really good at chess. Maybe you're even a grandmaster and then you're this top level play. You're one of the top 10 players in the world. And this pawn here to c4 it, is really great because it, it attacks his opponent. Um, it recognizes where his opponent's trying to attack him at. And it also opens up the door with his queen here attacking uh, this pawn here on f2 doesn't mind if his opponent takes his knight he could take this bishop uh you know that's going to be fine for him if instead he decides to you know take this pawn right here uh then the queen can come down force this king to move, let's say h2, uh, then we can see the queen to g3. It gets pretty bad for, for white in this particular situation. So putting a lot of pressure on his opponent to find moves early on is always going to be good, especially since black went second in this particular case. So the bishop's now going to come to e3, attacking this queen. The queen is forced to move back, so coming back here to c7, this is still a fine square. And again, this is also an interesting place in this board. So if we look at it, uh, white is threatening uh, this knight here on e4, but his bishop here on b3 is also being attacked. Me, I'm, I'm always bringing my bishop Bishop back here to c2, um, adding more defense on this pawn here on d3, but I just don't want to lose my pawn. In this particular game, uh, Oscar decides to go ahead and play bishop to uh, d4, kind of protecting this pawn on e5 and trying to make sure that there, there's no sort of breakage on this d file. But then the pawn can just take here on b3. Um, after the recapture, we have pawn here to f6. And then white takes the knight back here on e4. So if we kind of look at material um, after the, the take back here, both sides are about equal in material, but black definitely has a much stronger position on board. He's a lot more aggressive. This knight here on b1 still hasn't been developed on board. Uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be very tough for white to try to find his way back into this game. Um, in this particular case, uh, Anish actually has a lot more time on board, uh, going into the later stages of this chess game. So now we see the knight come back here to d2 being attacked. We see pawn here to f5 really, really strengthening this pawn chain right here. And if we look from, from white's perspective, it's pretty difficult to find a great move for white as far as what white's really trying to do in this particular case. Uh, black, on the other hand, he knows he gets to... He needs to get his light square bishop involved into the game. He needs to continue to add pressure on this D file right here. He needs to get his other rook involved into the game. Uh, maybe break up the center of the board with his queen and his bishop right here. And just maintain the pressure on his opponent. So we see pawn here to f3. Trying to break up this pawn chain right here. Again, there's not a ton of great moves that white has on board. Now black decides to go ahead and break up the center by sacrificing his knight. So after the pawn takes... Now this, the rook's going to swing down. Uh, again, black now has an advantage in material, but also if we kind of look at white's perspective, he has two double pawns here on the B file. So uh, not only is he down material, not only is he down on aggression, uh, but also his pawn structure is a lot worse. We now see the pawn capture and then the pawn recapture here on e4. Rook taking here on e4. The rook can't take back because the knight's protecting it right here. And then Anish decides to play queen here to b6. Now probably a little safer in my opinion to play queen back here to d8. He is, again, adding a lot of pressure on this d file right here. Uh, queen to to b6 is fine. Uh, it's kind of one of those moves of, hey, I'm attacking another square. I have a discovered attack. If I move my rook right here, I'm also defending it. 
It's one of those like, hey, I'm really, really good at chess. I found this move, even though maybe it's not better. I just want to let you know that I found it. That That's kind of what I think when I when I see this move. Uh, but the king's going to come over here to h1. You never want to leave yourself vulnerable to a discovered attack. Uh, now the bishop to f5 again. Kind of what we talked about the game plan for black is break up the center of the board. Get his light square bishop involved. He has the double bishop pair, which is always good on an open board, which is what we have right here. His opponent still hasn't played his knight on b1 anywhere on board. Uh, his rook on a1 hasn't moved. He really hasn't done much much with his queen right here so much more aggressive game from black going on on board right now we now see uh, the rook being captured the queen coming in here the bishop taking on e5 so uh, black is again up in material he has the double bishop pair and now it's just a matter of adding more and more pressure uh, until his opponent just resigns so uh, the rook up here to a4 queen to d3 Queen over here to e1, uh, bishop to g3 again, continuously adding pressure right here. Uh, queen up here to e2, rook over here to d8, uh, and Oscar de la Rosa decides in this particular case, sorry, Oscar de la Riva decides in this particular case uh, to go ahead and resign. He only had about three minutes left on board. His opponent had almost 40 minutes on board, so he decided, you know, he was down in material uh, playing someone that doesn't really make mistakes in the end game. I personally, uh, you know, always like for players to finish games out even though they are down, uh, but, you know, top level play, this is just how players are, uh, decides to go ahead in this position, which is for the most part losing at this high level, uh, decides to go ahead and resign. So in our first match that we covered, a very, very great game from the young 20-year-old, uh, the, the Dutchman. Great game. Very, very talented player over there from um, Oscar de la Riva. Really Really good to see him come in in the first match uh, and play well. Hopefully, he has a good tournament for his country. Uh, he kind of leads his team over there be, being the best player. So, hopefully, you guys uh, enjoyed this first match. Really excited about the Chess Olympiad. Hopefully, we'll have tons of games to cover. But hopefully, you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.